Hi, I'm Evan Carmichael. Welcome to a special edition of Ask Evan. Today we're going to look at what is the role of the balance sheet and how can you use it to make important decisions for your business. Intuit recently ran a survey which found that the single biggest reason that most small businesses don't succeed is that they lack the financial literacy skills to navigate the obstacles in front of them. Only 51% of companies that start up today will still be around five years from now. In order to change that, we're creating a new series of posts on financial literacy to help you make sense of the information in front of you. Today we're going to look at what the role of the balance sheet is and how it can be used to help you grow your business. What is the role of the balance sheet? At a very high level, the balance sheet represents what resources your company owns, the assets, versus how much you owe to others, your liabilities. The difference is your owner's equity in the company. Let's start with the assets. Using my QuickBooks Online account, I'm going to check out a sample balance sheet for you to have a look at. This is data from a sample company, Craig's Design and Landscaping Services. The assets are split into current assets and fixed assets. Current assets are cash and things that can be converted into cash in a relatively short amount of time. In Craig's case, he has a few bank accounts, accounts receivable, and some undeposited funds. Fixed assets are permanent investments that are used to run the business but are not actually for sale by the business. In Craig's case, his only fixed asset is his truck, but it can also include equipment, buildings, lands, patents, and so on. Now let's look at Craig's liabilities and owner's equity. Liabilities are split into current liabilities and long-term liabilities. Current liabilities are what your company owes and has to pay off within a year from the balance sheet being created. In Craig's case, he has accounts payable, credit cards, loans, and sales tax to pay. Long-term liabilities are everything else that your company owes that is due beyond one year from the balance sheet being created. In Craig's case, his only long-term liability is a note payable. Now a balance sheet has to, well, balance. So the difference between your assets and your liabilities is your equity. If we look at Craig's complete balance sheet, you'll see that he has $30,275 in liabilities and only $26,684 in assets, which gives him a negative equity of $3,590. So how does this help? Now that you know what the numbers mean and their values, you can start making important business decisions from them. Here are a few to consider. Number one, current assets to current liabilities. Also known as working capital, you wanna have more current assets compared to current liabilities. This will help ensure that you have enough money to fund your short-term debts, as well as the day-to-day -day operations of your business. If your current liabilities are more than your current assets, then you're going to feel a major cash crunch within the next year. Your options could be to make more sales, sell some inventory, restructure your loans, or apply for short-term financing. If we look at Craig's data, he has $13,239 in current assets and only $5,275 in current liabilities, so right now he doesn't have to worry. Number two, fixed assets to long-term liabilities. You also want to have more fixed assets than long-term liabilities. This will help ensure that you have enough in the business to fund your longer term debts. Ideally, you want your long term liabilities to be around 50 to 70% of your fixed assets. If your ratio is higher, remember that the value of fixed assets like land, buildings, patents, and so on often increase with time, and your best bet would be to try and refinance and pitch your lender that it's better to have them keep you around and making payments rather than force you into liquidity. Looking at Craig's data, we see he's in trouble. His fixed assets total $13,445 and his long-term liabilities are $25,000. This means that if he can't turn his business around, he's going to be in serious cash crunch after the year is up. Number 3. Raising Capital Finally, let's look at the story a balance sheet shows to potential investors. If you want to raise money, any investor or lender will want to see your balance sheet. They're going to look at your working capital to see if you can survive in the short run and they'll compare your fixed assets to your long-term liabilities to see if you can survive in the long run, but they're also gonna look at your equity. They wanna see how much you have in the business. If you don't have much equity, it's gonna make it hard for them to give you any kind of money because you're very high risk. Looking at Craig's data, again, he's in trouble. He has negative equity of $3,590. He took out a $25,000 loan and spent 13,000 and a half approximately on a truck. Where did the other $11,500 go? While Craig's company has some positive signs in that it has over $3,000 in net income, which means the company earned more in revenue than it spent in expenses, it would be very hard for Craig to convince someone to give him more money without proving he can do better or providing a personal guarantee. 
To wrap up, it all starts with the tools. 76% of entrepreneurs who use financial software or a solution their accountant provided feel confident that they have a strong grasp of financial management principles. If you know where the problems are ahead of time, you can plan for them so you're not constantly putting out fires as they happen. Here's your next step. Starting the business can be empowering, but it also demands a level of financial understanding to make sure your business succeeds. To help address this need for financial expertise, Intuit is offering free one-on-one -on -one consultation for small businesses with their Intuit Pro Advisors. Entrepreneurs can go to www.sprouter.com slash Intuit Canada to set up a free consultation today. Thank you for joining me for another edition of Ask Evan. If you like this video and you want to see more, please give it a thumbs up below. What makes me want to do more of these videos for you guys. I'd also love to hear what you have to think. If you want to leave a comment under the video, I always read those and I love seeing them come in. So thank you and we'll see you on the next episode.